In this video, Linus, Anna, and Daly will sail to the jagged island of Wapu, where we'll go hike a waterfall and prepare to leave the magical islands of the Marquesas. Ring the bell notification icon and subscribe. We've sailed to some pretty amazing places like the Bay of Virgins and its tricky anchorage. After getting fuel and water in Nukahiva, we had an upwind sail to the last inhabited island in the Marquesas that me and Daly had not visited, Wapu. It was a nice day, but we couldn't quite sail the whole way and had to motor the last mile into the harbor. Quite tacking. We dropped anchor just outside the breakwater in Hakahau, but I had to deal with some charging issues before we dinghy to shore. I noticed the alternator was not charging uh, and I was having trouble keeping the batteries up. And uh, it seems like the cause, hopefully, fingers crossed, is this belt is going bad, that it's cracking and it's it's ready to be replaced. So the thing that I have to replace the most on the Yanmar is the alternator belt. So conceivably, I have to replace like five a season, as many as five a season, uh, if I were a full season. Probably last year I replaced three, and when I was in the Bahamas, I replaced five. You can see how much I can push the alternator belt here. But the other thing you should notice is the cracking Right, it's cracking and it will fail pretty soon. And when it fails, the engine must stop because you won't have cooling. Uh, and so you're gonna lose the engine until you can replace it. So you don't wanna get to the stage that it breaks. Wapu was the first island that we sailed to with Anna as a crew member. And we were eager to explore the island even though the day was almost done. Wapu has a really small anchorage, and unfortunately there wasn't enough room for us to anchor behind the breakwater, so we had a pretty rolly spot. The word is these uh, drinking water taps are not potable. I wasn't really able to get a good cellular signal where we were in Controller Bay filling water in Nukahiva. Once we were in the, the main town of Hakahau in the island of Wapu, I was able to get a cellular signal and get a little bit more detailed weather information. And it seemed to me that we were getting pretty late to, to get to Jana and Sophie by July 1st, and we better not miss our next weather window, which looked like it might be right then. And I was also eager to check the internet. We went to the Pukey guest house, which supposedly had Wi-Fi and drinks. The Lonely Planet suggested Jerome as a hiking guide. He is the owner with his wife of the Pukey Pension. And luckily for us, he was arranging a tour for the next day. He labeled it the crossing on his website. It goes from Hakahau to Hakatau and visits a waterfall on the way. He labels it a three to four hour hike, but we would find it more an eight hour hike. And probably the quicker way to get between the two towns, although he said this was a shortcut, would be to just take the road which follows the sea and is, is a very scenic route and not very well traveled by cars. But as of yet, I had been unsuccessful successful in retaining a hiking guide and was reluctant to pass up on the opportunity with Jerome. Hakahau's harbor, like all Marquesan harbors that I saw, are really small. You can get very close to the shore, so a rowing dinghy, a hard-sided rowing dinghy, is ideal, especially since they have concrete breakwaters. Went back to the boat and would meet Jerome and the other hikers in the morning. Pukey Pension Restaurant and uh, Bar. Uh, the proprietor is named Jerome, and he gives guided tours of the island of Wapu. Today we're going to do a tour uh, that will take us to the village of Hakatu and uh, the cascade or waterfall nearby. 
is located just up the hill uh, from the dinghy dock. So it's really the first turn off uh, to your left as you're coming into town and just walk up the hill about 100 meters and you'll be here. So Jerome drove us to kind of the start of our walk, but he wouldn't let my walking stick on, which he called a baton. He insisted on making a baton for me on the way. Jerome does not have really fluent English. He, he has some set pieces that he will say in English, but he's not very conversational. Of course, his English is much better than my French. And Anna, who is Dutch, she translated some, but I got the impression that she doesn't have super strong French either. Jerome likes to talk about biosecurity issues of not transporting dirt and soil from different islands onto other islands. And he also likes to talk about the flora and fauna of Wapu. I was also impressed by Jerome's superhuman ability to resist mosquito bites. I observed at least half a dozen mosquitoes biting him at once, and he never flinched or noticed their presence. His arms did not swell up, but many other people's arms did swell up from the mosquito bites. I luckily had brought my DEET spray and was not bitten too bad. You probably should have some good walking shoes or hiking shoes. I took my running shoes because they were the best suited for hiking of all the shoes I had on the boat. But a lot of folks uh, just brought, brought flip-flops. I, I bring flip-flops for the swimming in the waterfall, so they're part of my pack, but I don't hike in them. And the flip-flops, you know, you tend to slide in those, and it's much easier to fall on an even ground. In particular, the army officers, the French army officer's wife, struggled a great deal as did some other folks with flip-flops. So I, I'd highly recommend bringing some, some sort of shoes uh, that have good tractions on them because if it had as recently rained, which is not unusual in the Marquesas, then it was a fairly physically challenging walk. In particular, the older couple struggled a great deal. Anna and I were okay, but I think we're both pretty fit in terms of doing a lot of walking. From my perspective, the Lonely Planet or the hiking guides tend to underestimate the amount of time the hikes take and how challenging they are. This was definitely not a do-it-yourself hike. If you want to do it yourself hike, I recommend just walking the road and that'll be plenty scenic, but finding the trail without Jerome would have been impossible. Like we're pretty close to the famous peaks of Wapu here, but there are a few valleys away. The Wapu waterfall outside of Hakahau, and uh, it was a long walk uh, over the mountains or the, or the foothills to get here from Hakatau, which is the the main town and probably the better anchorage for a cruising boat. After a long hot hike, swimming underneath a waterfall feels really good. So it's always a good idea to bring some swimwear underneath your clothes, wear them underneath your clothes, so uh, you can jump right in when you get there. So I've been known not to wear swimwear, but I just swam in my entire outfit. Uh, which is dries fairly easily in the warm days in the Marquesas. Just don't forget to leave all your electrical devices on shore. After our hike, we are in Hakatau, uh, which is also a great anchorage. And uh, there are a couple boats anchored here right now. And uh, I don't think there are any stores in town, but it's worth a look if the, it's too rolly in Hakahau. Most of the hikers got a boat ride back to Hakahau, but me and Anna got the budget option of a car ride with Jerome and his wife back to town. In Hakahau, where we'd get some last minute cash and provisions before we left. I got back my passage emails from my weather routers and they indicated that I had definitely a good weather window 
of mild weather to Fakarava and possibly all the way to Tahiti if I left soon. Even if I couldn't make it to Tahiti in one jump, I felt getting half the passage out of the way to the Tuamotu island of Fakarava was important to make sure that I was not late for when Sophie and Jana flew in from Louisiana. And uh, Wapu here is uh, said to have the best provisioning in the Marquesas and I'm about ready to get go into one of the bigger of the magazines here. Subscribe to Slow Boat Sailing. We feature the stories of the most interesting sailors in the world, ripped from the headline news and vlogs of our round the world adventure. Hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next video. This video was brought to you by Mantis Marine and viewers like you on patreon.com slash slowboatsailing. Go there for great rewards such as free audiobooks with a pledge. Mantis aimed to design the most reliable anchor ever made. Other anchors often cannot set in firm or grassy bottoms, endangering your safety. The Mantis frequently sets the first time even in the most demanding situations. We sleep a lot easier using the Mantis Anchor as our primary on the slow boat. Get yours at mantisanchors.com or other fine retailers.